welcome into AZ Audibles. I'm Haley Stasiak alongside Eric Sorensen and Jordan Ham. Guys, signing day has come and gone. Around 80 guys in Arizona got Division I offers, and a big chunk of those offers came from Pac-12 schools. So what are we seeing with the Pac-12 schools coming into Arizona and recruiting? The conference isn't just getting good players, they're getting elite players. And we saw this in the past, Oregon and more recently Stanford coming in and getting good players to their programs. And now more recently, Chris Peterson from Washington gets Byron Murphy out of Saguaro. And USC, and although Austin Jackson and Isaiah Polamau both had family ties to the program, seeing the Trojans pluck those guys just shows you the power of the schools on the West Coast, not just Arizona and Arizona State when it comes to recruiting Arizona. And it's not just USC, it's the entire city of LA, UCLA came in, had a great haul as well. Ottawa, Isabor, Jax Wakeser, Sean Seawards was able to pick up really all of those guys after the first of the year. A lot of help up front, definitely. Yeah, that, the two trenches, they just absolutely cleaned up in the state of Arizona and really closed very well. And then you also look at the at Chandler. You had a great pipeline with Oregon State. They still have Colby Taylor, but they were going to have TJ Green. He ends up flipping to Utah. Johnny Johnson's going over to Oregon. So uh, Chandler has three guys going Pac-12 to three different schools, and it just speaks to the depth that this class had. A story that slid under the radar from signing day was a trio of Valley-wide receivers who are headed to NAU. Who wouldn't want to go play with Case Cookus? Talented quarterback with the Lumberjacks, 13 touchdowns, only one interception, only played in four games last year. And what history has shown is Valley wide receivers that go to NAU perform well. Emmanuel Butler, formerly at Mountain Point, over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. Elijah Marks from Desert Edge, mm -hmm. really good secondary complimentary wide receiver with 800 yards last season and seven scores. And I think a big difference maker for Jerome Sowers is the work Aaron Flugrad is doing on that staff. The wide receivers coach is coming down the valley, recruiting hard, and really selling what they're doing in Flagstaff. A storyline that jumped out to me was Rashi Hodge going to South Dakota State. Speaking of NAU that recruits the valley very well, South Dakota State's able to been able to come down here and get quite a few ball players. Hodge is totally in that group. He was a two-way star for Mountain Point, played running back, played linebacker. When there were injuries, he really stepped up uh, and really helped them get to that state championship game. And so I think that South Dakota State really has a football player coming up in Rashi Hodge. With much of the 2017 class signed, Sports 360 AZ caught up with a few players to talk about the pressures of the recruitment process. Sometimes the recruiting process isn't nearly as glamorous as it appears. For many student athletes, the pressures can be overwhelming when it comes to selecting the right school for their academic and football future. It was just a very hard time. Ever since I was a sophomore, it was a hard time seeing what school was going to be best. All the schools, they provide everything that you need to be successful for to be a student athlete. You still have to look at the pros and cons and compare schools. Everything was a little bit difficult, change, seeing all the programs around. I mean, I met some good people at every school. I learned a lot, like you have to be patient and stuff and just think about it and, and slow down and just be yourself, most importantly. Probably just keeping in contact with all the coaches and just kind of figuring out what school fits you best personally and football-wise, so that's what you gotta worry about the most. Like Columbia, just meeting the players, they kind of kicking in with them, just kind of see what is, what is life's like for them. They took it out to a nice Italian restaurant. Oh God, all the food you can eat. They just kept bringing it, and the plates after plates, so it was, it was amazing. I had a lot of great schools, I had a lot of Ivy League schools. Uh, I really thank all those recruiters coming out and, and it wanted me to come play for them, but I didn't have that D1 uh, FBS uh, program that I wanted to come after me. And then I went on my visit down to U of A and uh, Coach Rodriguez, I, he brought me in one-on-one. -on -one. ASU has been there since I was a sophomore. They've been there every day, every week, every month for three years straight. They wanted me bad and they, they proved it and they showed it. Staying on the topic of recruitment, let's talk about coaching influences on these players. We know Jared Poplowski was a longtime ASU commit who flipped his commitment to Colorado after tight ends coach Delvon Alexander went to Notre Dame and offensive coordinator Chip Lindsay is now going to Auburn. Well, with these assistant coaches, those are the relationships that are being built. Those are the boots on the ground. Yeah, Coach Graham, uh, Rich Rodriguez, they certainly build a relationship with these guys as well, but these are the guys that are in constant contact. So when people leave, specifically deep in the recruiting cycle, that can really hurt their chances. I think that ASU had a real shot for Austin Jackson, but Chris Thompson, their offensive line coach, left for TCU. Uh, this was in the new year, so just a couple of weeks ago. And then for Arizona, Dante Williams, who was just a no 
recruiter and a, a very good coach. He came from San Jose State last year, went to Arizona. He ended up leaving to go to Nebraska. Very quickly after that, Greg Johnson, one of the top athletes in the West, decommits as well. So when there's that turnover towards the end of the season, right before the recruiting cycle ends, it can be really tough for these schools to uh, recover after that. And I think that both Arizona and Arizona State struggled with that this year. Yeah, you mentioned Dante Williams. You wouldn't think Arizona losing a coach to Nebraska would impact recruiting, but we've seen the Cornhuskers love to come into the state of Arizona and recruit. So just another stepping stone for Rich Rod and his staff to try to get back on track as they try to put a fence around the state. It's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. Looking forward to the 2017 season, Queen Creek has given Sports 360 AZ exclusive access to their new uniforms. The purple, black, and gold is such a clean, classic look. I know the Bulldogs are going to love wearing those next season. It reminds me a lot of the Washington Huskies, how they kind of wear their blackout jerseys. Maybe throw some chrome up there. Ooh, nice. It's gonna look snazzy. I like the way you think. I like it. That's what we've got for you this week on AZ Audibles. We'll see you next week.